Welcome to this lecture on scaling your analog signals. And as you can see on your screen right now, you have a function block diagram, which essentially features the PIDE, an advanced version of the PID instruction at which we looked at a couple of lectures ago. That being said, it's not going to be our main focus. Our main focus is going to be looking at the scaling function, which you may have seen me uh, struggle with in another lecture where I had to scale an analog. And the reason for that is that the scaling instruction is no longer present in ladder logic in Studio 5000 as well as RS Logics 5000. And just to give you a better illustration, so here's a program which is scaling with parameters through the SCP instruction that we looked at yet another video and it's also explained on solusplc.com. But essentially, this instruction is no longer available within RS Logics and Studio 5000 environments in the ladder logic version. However, they are still available in function block diagrams, and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. So for those of you who are not familiar with function block diagrams, there are essentially a way to represent your logic for PLC programming, but just in this illustrational way. So it's similar to what uh, you would achieve with a ladder, but some of the nuances are quite a bit different and some of the instructions, so if we right click on this and we go into instruction help, some of the instructions are going to be available only for a certain type of programming. So here, for example, if we go into the scaling instruction, you'll notice that it's available for function blocks as well as structured text, but it's not available for ladder diagrams. So right here, you can see that this instruction is not available in ladder diagram logic. That being said, in 500, if I was to put in an instruction and then change the instruction type, I can definitely type in SCL. And as you can see, this is the scaling instruction that we've looked at on the other side. And the reason for that is really, it's difficult to explain why they decided to exclude this from the ladder. Uh, but we can only we can only guess why that is. That being said, you do want to leverage the power of function blocks and still be able to scale some of your signals through these um, function blocks without having the, I guess, the fear of using a different type of logic. Now, how does this fit all together? So typically, if you have your inputs and outputs, you're always going to scale, for example, an analog input, and you're also going to scale an analog output before it's sent to the card. So the reason for that is because your inputs are typically, depending, of course, on your scaling, are going to be ranging from zero to 16,000 which is essentially your two to the power, um, to a certain power, I, I believe it's 15 bits, so two to the power 15, that's going to be the value. But inside of your program, you want to understand that through a, a human readable, essentially, interface. So you're going to have an input which comes in, then it's going to scale to a value that we can understand easily, and then it's going to be used in the program. So for example, a certain pressure level or a certain distance is going to come in on that value from zero to 16,000, and then you'd scale that to PSI or bar, or for example, meters, inches, or feet, so that you can easily program the conditions. And then based on those conditions, you can easily uh, program certain other features. Features. That being said, how do we do the scaling? So in our main program, I can right click this, select add, and just like we've done many times, add new routine. From the new routine here, I'm going to give this a name. So of course, we're going to use a next digital. So 07, and this is going to be analog input scaling. I'm going to call it as such. The type is going to change now from ladder diagram. It's going to go into function block diagram. And of course, it's going to be created with a main. I'm going to hit on OK. And if I double click the analog input scaling routine that we've just created, you will notice a blank canvas in front of you. You do need to create, uh, click on this start pending routine edits before you make any changes. And you'll notice that there's going to be these little symbols that appear. And just like in ladder diagrams, you will need to confirm your logic. And of course, execute it. The, if everything's written correctly, it's going to write to the PLC. So here we're going to input our instructions. And just like in ladder, you have this 
uh, this pane which allows you to select what you're going to use and you can either click them or of course drag them out so if you delete the element you can drag out the SCL and place it on your chart. You can also double click and access certain parameters of the of the block and these are going to be different you know they're going to have a name they're going to have a value type of course depending on your data type and they're going to have a description which if you go into the help menu for this specific instruction you can read more about them that being said the scaling instruction it's going to require let's go back into um let's go back into our RS Logix 500 it's going to require a source which is essentially your input is going to require some kind of a rate which becomes your essentially if you think of this as a scaling function it's equivalent to y equals ax plus b for those of you who've uh, done some linear equations a very simple approach so the rate is going to be your a then the offset is going to be your b and the destination of course is going to be your output so let's switch back to the same uh, same program so here we have the in but now you have the min the max for the for the input and then you also have the min the max for the scaled output and when I'm selecting these visual tags over here this only means that I'm going to be displaying them on the screen so you'll notice the difference right now essentially now we only have the in and the out if I select those parameters and hit apply and hit ok you'll notice that they've appeared within my instruction and personally I just think it makes it easier to tie tags in and essentially when you leave it through these values you put in constants only you cannot put tags in uh, inside of here in any case so we do need an input we do need an output we need a raw max min as well as the scaling max and min and the instruction really in case you're paying attention to these parameters is more representative of the scp and that's the reason why i had shown this to you first so here on the scp you have an input you have an input min max as well as the scaled min and max and the reason for that is i've i've discussed this in a previous video but they're very similar you can use basic mathematical equations in order to confirm uh, convert from one to the other that being said let's go back into the designer studio and here the way we do need to create this is you'll notice that there's going to be reference bubbles and there's going to be input wire connectors but essentially if we drag this out then you'll notice that we have this little uh, kind of a dongle that stays there and we can link it to the input through the use of this wire so I start a connection at a point and I end it at a point and I can relabel this to be my input and let's make that analog input and this is going to be analog input zero of course you can use many of these but we do need to create the tag just like we did before so new analog input this is going to be a real value of let's say 100 and it's going to be PLC scoped. Let's click on create. And as you can see, it's very helpful. It shows you the value kind of on the side here. That being said, we do need to create also tags for this raw max min um, on both sides. We can drag out some more of these bubbles. And essentially, these can be, as I said, they can be tags or they can also be constants. You can choose to leave them as such. So what I'm going to do here is, let's say my min, like I was saying, is going to be zero. And then I'm going to copy paste this over and I'm going to make this 16,000. Um, and I'm going to link those in. So the min is going to go here. And just for vi visually pleasing uh, kind of programming, you don't want these to ever overlap. I don't know why this instruction is smaller than it usually appears, but a lot of times I can just kind of move this in closer let's see if we can make that happen there you go that looks that looks really neat and then we're going to also need a scaling so this input scaling max and min they're also going to be values so on this side let's think that we're converting for example to temperature so this is a temperature probe that we have in the field and the range for the specification in the data sheet is going to be from zero degrees to 300 degrees so we definitely need to set that up like so. And of course, the analog output, I'm just going to copy. I'm going to copy this entire bubble. But actually, we cannot cop copy the bubble because we do need an output reference. So this is going to be a kind of a an OTE, so to speak, or a move instruction that is analogous to what you would expect 
in uh, in ladder logic. So this is going to be an analog out or analog. Let's call that analog scaled zero. And we're going to delete this for a second. I'm going to create a new tag. This is going to be once again a real. This is going to be zero PLC box. I believe I mistyped something real. Oh, no, obviously we cannot, we cannot have zero of them. The zero is going to be the reference here. So, okay, so that's the output like so. And as you can see, everything's okay. There's no errors on the instruction. That being said, we do need to, usually you do need to create a new instruction, but I think, let's see here. I'm going to change the number because I think I've used this somewhere else. And you can give it any name that you'd like. That being said, you do need to create a new instruction which uh, is going to be controlling that specific block. And it's a, it's essentially a different approach than what you'd see in ladder logic. If you drag out a move or a T on instruction, you don't need to create it. But here you do need to create everything for the larger blocks. So let's see here, we have an input, we have an output, and we have the scaling parameters. Here, of course, we can do the same except pending edits, we can do the except pending program edits, and we can just write everything finalize in program. So let's click on that. Let's click Yes. And then one thing that I didn't do is I didn't add a jump to subroutine. So I'm going to go back to the main, just scroll this up a little bit so you can see better. And I'm going to copy this in and I'm going to paste in the seventh routine, which is important in order to activate the logic there, I'm going to recompile once again. And let's see here. So if we go to the routine, you'll notice that there's going to be the iconic green margins on the side here. So that means the instruction is essentially working. That being said, we're transferring a zero. So I'm going to monitor this input, and I'm going to force a certain value. So let's try for example, 10,000. And I'm going to write that in. And you'll notice that the 10,000 based on the conversion values that we've specified in these tags is going to convert to 185.5 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius, depending on, of course, the temperature sensors reading. So this is how you can scale all of your items, your analog inputs, as well as analog outputs, as they go out to sensors as they go out to flow meters. So just very, very convenient. And to finalize this tutorial, if you want to create more of these, all you need to do really is start the pending edits. And it's very convenient to just copy the entire structure and you can just scroll down. And what I would typically do is I would create them for all the different for all the different inputs. And it's a little bit finicky as you saw there with the lines, but it should be pasting as correctly. And usually you can start creating a number of these, you'll, you'll notice these wires become a little bit strange, but essentially they are tied to the right to the right points. If you copy and paste like that, you also have this, um, this essentially sheet numbering. So here you have a sheet number one, and you can create new sheets by clicking this add sheet button. So you can create an infinite number of these spaces. But essentially, otherwise, you're limited to this specific area in which you can create these instructions. So you, of course, you do run out of space, but you can create multiple sheets. And then you can start labeling those sheets if you need more of these uh, function blocks. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.